hello and welcome to Experience Recovery Conversations. Um, as we've progressed these conversations, it's come from more about lockdown and how to get out of lockdown into what we've learned during lockdown and how we can really make a difference going forward. And I'm really pleased to be joined by Hayley, who's actually just finished work. So come straight in to have this conversation with me. So Hayley, can you just give us an intro? Tell us who you are, what you do and where you do it, please. Hello, um, I'm Hayley Simpson. I'm currently working for Active Team Side as a sports coach. Um, I'm working in, based in five primary schools within Mosley and Thameside um, and we're all part of a hub as well um, and then also on the side of my work that I do at Active Thameside um, I'm also a volunteer coach at East Cheshire Harriers and I'm a coaching coordinator involved there okay. um, so that's had a big involvement as well during lockdown and I'm also now the Covid officer for East Cheshire as well so oh wow okay so, quite a role and so so what's your discipline then for athletics? Uh, I mainly focus on uh, endurance, so my favourite distance is half marathon. I love cross country. Okay, right. Okay, I can't. I can't find that. I, I managed <laughs> to ten k in lockdown in just I think in about fifty four minutes, but that was my limit. I wasn't going any further than that. So I'm impressed. That's very good. And that whole voluntary stuff must be really interesting because a lot of grassroots sports. You know, I run a hockey club. We've just not been able to do anything. Has that been the same for you guys? Um, yeah, so initially in lockdown, we obviously shut down straight away. Yeah. Um, when we was allowed to open the facility one-to-one, -one, we did it straight away uh, just because mm. we've got, we had loads of athletes that were wanting to get back. Um, so it's just been a lot of getting risk assessments together, mm. health declaration forms. So that in the background was a lot. Okay, And there's two of us sharing the role as COVID officer. Mm. Um, and then we got to six to one. So we had some groups back. We got to 12 to one and then we're back to square one. Um, so during that, I did... The first lockdown, I did 100 fitness challenges each day for 100 oh, yeah. days. Um, and then now we're doing a 1K and a 2K time trial. Um, mm -hmm. I've also had coaches who are currently still coaching one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some coaches, I'm doing online sessions for my children. I've got the under 11s. So we do two Zoom sessions a week, fitness-based. Yeah. Try and keep the more social side of it. Um, mm. um, and then, yeah, we're doing 1K and 2K time trials. So we've got from my eight-year-olds that are doing it to our seniors that are engaging in it so it's, yeah. it's kept everyone together no that, that's really good my, my daughter and I do two practices on a Sunday so we we, vid we film them on a on a Saturday and then put them out on a Sunday for people to practice at home and it, it, it I have to say it's starting to stretch our imagination now because yeah. of everybody's got all the equipment you know it's not we, we've got a nice little piece of astroturf that we roll out and play on that but not everybody's got that yeah We've yeah. been doing that for Active Team side as well. So a lot of the coaches have been delivering um, online sessions that we then put onto YouTube that they can do at home or even schools can use. Um, mm. So like I've done an athletics one. We've got basketball ones out there. And right. then for my Mosley schools, for the children who were working at home, our home learners, I was setting three challenges a week for them to do as well. So, yeah, mm. it's a lot of adapting, a lot of losing socks. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and tin cans and milk bottles. Yeah. So <laughs> Talk to me a little bit, Hayley, about what sort of things you were doing before lockdown, because you, you say you're a sports coach. I know you work at five different schools uh, in a week. So what, what, was your, what was your day like then? What sort of things did you do? Um, so we were teaching every, more or less every year from nursery to year six in quite a mm. lot of schools. Um, we was obviously focused around the sport. So we was going from maybe hockey to basketball to athletics each term. Um, coaching obviously a full class we had 30 mm -hmm. children I was delivering lunch clubs I was delivering after school clubs and then during the holidays we also do a holiday provision so right. um, we're based in our centres we could have had you know 60 children some days um, mm -hmm. so then basically we've just gone to lockdown right okay but of course in lockdown a lot of key worker children were still coming into school so were you still involved then in, in delivering physical activity people? yeah yeah so uh, throughout right. it all I was in all my schools um mm -hmm. delivering physical activity also helping out in the schools if they needed help with other things um and yeah just keeping them as active as possible really okay. and then during the holiday camps we also put provision on for the key worker and the vulnerable children again so we have still been delivering even during the holidays Okay, so how does the bubble piece work then? How did that change the way you delivered by having to have those primary school children into defined bubbles? Um, so for us, it's been we've had to social distance at all times. So teaching has become completely different, um, making sure that you're two metres away from the child at all times. Mm. Um, obviously, it was smaller classes as well. Um, some of the times during some phases of the lockdown, we had different children, so we could have had from nursery to year six in one bubble. Right. Um, so that was obviously very because we were used to teaching year six, year five, mm -hmm. year four. So then you've had to have gone to adapting now to 
delivering a session that fits all ages. Right. And do you think that will have helped some of the younger ones develop quicker? Um, you know, I, I, with siblings and things like that, we've got neighbours who've got a, a, a five-year-old and a three-year-old, and the three-year-old is always chasing the five-year-old, always wanting to, to do what the older child is doing. Did you find that those younger children d- develop quicker because of the challenge of having the older kids in the group? Yeah, and I think it helped them a lot socially. And I also think right. it helped the older ones because the older ones you could take on a role of coach. Can they help right. them do this? Can they show them how to do that? So I think it's helped both ways, to be honest, really. Mm. Yeah, that's quite interesting, actually, when the younger kid, the older kids start becoming the coach, start becoming yeah. the leader, um, almost naturally as a result. Yeah, it must be fascinating. Yeah, it's been really, really nice to see. And, and have you found that now as, as you've come back and the kids have come back to school, you know, my daughter went back on Monday, I think it was. And, and what sort of changes have you seen in the kids that you're working with? To be honest, I think this week they've all just been amazed to be back in school. Um, it's just been excitement and controlling the excitement to be honest in B mm. lessons they've just been amazed to be back in school and seeing right. the friends um yeah so I think it's been a lot of excitement this time round not really anxious or anything like that they've just loved mm. being back in school and back involved in a PE lesson mm. that's really good isn't it and I you write about that anxiousness because I guess it's not the first time it's happened it's the third time it's happened so therefore it's not an unknown anymore is it so oh no so have you have you found that you know with with the stuff that you do you know the lunchtime clubs and things like that 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 kids have really valued the input as well as the parents yeah I'd say so I'd say so and I know a lot who've just started like my after school clubs like I've been really happy to be back Mm and they're like oh it's great great to be doing this and great I think just to be because PE obviously gets them playing team games and involved with the friends and I think they've really enjoyed that side of it because they've probably missed out on that during you know lockdown not seeing Mm -hmm. the friends face to face yeah it's been a big part okay and when we started talking earlier you started referring to some of the the things that you've been doing with with the athletics club as well as what you've been doing with the school and you talked about doing things like online and and doing different having different resources what what sort of things really work to to maintain that engagement uh, um, at the lockdown so i run both the twitter our twitter page and our facebook page um mm. and i think on the social media side of it has honestly kept people together right. um i've been using zoom for my children this lockdown and that's been working really well because the first few minutes they've been able to socialize mm. um so i think because last time we had 17 weeks where they didn't see each other right. and now i've just been able to keep that social element going for them so zooms mm. work really well social medias work really well uh, and you've just email and i email my group um regular things updates mm. things to keep them busy so that works really well for us okay. excellent so so will you take any of that forward do you think any of this stuff will stick has it been more effective more efficient at what you've been trying to do um i think the social media side i think we've been using it a lot more and i think it's mm. something that going forward we are going to use a lot more um definitely i think zoom is amazing um mm. and i think it might be something that say one of us can't attend training one night or um for meetings as well when I, I run coaches meetings and sometimes mm. people need to get home so making it more of a convenient time and being able to do it on zoom where everyone's at home and warm is probably a better idea as well so it's probably something that we will definitely take forward oh, that's good and um, do you think you'll, you'll carry on with those those bubble things do you think you'll you'll start looking at how you bring a group of kids together and take them through a program um yeah possibly we do at East Cheshire based we do have um, a development program that we do mm. follow um so that is something that we we do follow at East Cheshire anyway it's just a nightmare at the moment because I've got 60 children I had a group of 60 that I used to coach with right. four, young, four helpers and we've now had to split into groups of 12 to follow the ratios but again it's hard because it's the friendship groups and yeah keeping the friends together and making sure that she's with him and he's there and making sure it fits in with parents' times. Um, so mm. it, it is quite complicated running sports, isn't it? At yeah. the grassroots <laughs> levels. It's not just about getting kids to turn up. There's actually a hell of a lot that goes yeah. in behind it. So uh, the, the, the PE piece with it, within schools, you, you talked about some of the creativity, you know, as, as when we talked about having the right equipment and things and, you know, losing socks and that type of stuff. Do you think some of the stuff that you're doing will be now more inclusive because you've had to think this child has not got the kit that I need them to have in order to practice something? hundred percent. So during the first lockdown, we were really limited on what equipment we could and couldn't mm. use. Um, and some, some schools were just using none. So 
obviously before that I was relying on being able to have it basketballs cones everything mm. and I think now I've become really adaptable so to be able to go into maybe a school that hasn't got as much equipment or maybe we're delivering hockey and we haven't got all the hockey sticks mm. be able to still do a hockey lesson uh, still focusing on the skills but maybe not have all the equipment so definitely I think that's really improved me as a coach 100 percent. right well that, that's really good to hear because that adaptability is something that often is, is quite difficult to find in people but you've had to do it you haven't had a lot yeah. choice in this activity have you really so so what does the future hold then what, what's your plans for the future what do you see this service that you're currently delivering how's it, how's it going to evolve I'm hoping to keep carrying on it within the five schools. I'm hoping that we usually run hub um, events. So every half term, we usually have all the six, uh, there's six schools in my hub. So we usually come together and we usually do a competition. Right. So I'm hoping that when we can get to September, when all the bubbles are gone, we can get back and we can actually do a few more rather than we usually do one and a half term. So play a bit of catch up in regards to that. Uh, definitely and keep our after schools and our lunch clubs going and keep the numbers high because they seem to have gone up quite a bit through the lockdown so trying yeah. to keep them high and keep children engaged okay that's quite interesting so your, your after school activities and your lunchtime stuff you're actually getting more engagement more kids taking part yeah i have done in some schools yeah 100 percent. oh that's fantastic news well that is really positive because there's a big fear that a lot of people have become inactive as a result of this so to hear that, that the increased numbers are, are happening is great. And you talk about these uh, hub things and competition. What do you actually compete at? Do you play a, a game of basketball or is it something? Yeah, so we usually follow the school, school's games. They usually follow um, a set set of sports each mm -hmm. half term. So we're usually following them. So usually we, I think we usually do tag rugby and basketball or netball. We usually do something for the younger children, a bit of a mm -hmm. multi-fields event. Um, and then we have our year 60s who come um, up and they deliver then events to the children. So that's one of right. the events we run. Yeah, and they even do something called the Mosley Olympics or so where they're competing on disciplines of athletics and they all get to compete is really good. Right, okay, that's fantastic. And to hear the year six leadership stuff is brilliant because I, I remember doing an award called the Community Sports Leaders Award when I first started out in this sector, which was helping me to learn how to coach. And I guess that's what you must be progressing yeah, yeah. to. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Right, Hayley, I'm going to have to say thank you so much for your time today. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Really, really interesting and, and very positive from a point of view of, of increased numbers. So thank you for your time. You take thank care. Thank you very much. You too. Bye. Cheers. Bye.